Inheritance in object-oriented programming refers to a mechanism whereby one data type, one class, uh, gets all the members from some other class from which it inherits. So for example, say we have three classes, animal, mammal, and cat. An animal inside that class, we have defined three members, A, B, and C. We don't care which ones are fields and which are methods in this context, just three members. And mammal has two members, D and E, and cat has two members, F and G. Well, if mammal inherits from animal, then in addition to D and E defined in mammal, it also implicitly has the members that were defined in animal, so it has A, B, and C as well. And cat, if it inherits from mammal, then it gets everything that mammal has. It gets both D and E defined in mammal and everything that mammal itself inherited. So cat ends up with all of them, D, E, A, B, and C. So when we instantiate cat, if E is a field, then every cat object is going to have its own field named E. And if, say, B is a method, then every cat object we can invoke the method B on that object. So to sum it up plainly, a class that inherits from another has everything defined in itself plus everything from that other class. In some object-oriented languages, like say C++, a class can inherit from multiple other classes. Uh, this gets very confusing very fast because it involves all sorts of complex rules about like what if both classes have members of the same name and all sorts of really uh, picky little rules like that. So Java simplifies things and says that a class can only inherit from one other class. And in fact, Java requires every class to inherit from another. The only exception is that there's a special built-in class called object, which is at the top of the hierarchy. And it, of course, doesn't inherit from anything. So effectively, any Java program is a hierarchy of classes with object at the top and every other class inheriting from one other. Here, for instance, Kate inherits from Ted, which in turn inherits from Jack, which in turn inherits from Object, and then we have Oliver inheriting from Brad, which inherits from Samantha, which inherits from Object, and Lisa and Milton both also inherit from Samantha. When talking about these relationship between classes, uh, there's a lot of different terms. Uh, if Kate inherits from Ted, then Kate is said to be a child of Ted, or a subclass of Ted, or a descendant of Ted and Ted is said to be the parent of Kate, or the superclass of Kate, or an ancestor of Kate. Whereas parent and superclass refers to the class that's immediately above another class in the hierarchy, and subclass and child class refers to one immediately below, ancestor refers to any class up the chain, and descendant refers to any class down the chain. So here, Jack is an ancestor of Kate, and Kate is a descendant of Jack. So the way we express these inheritance relationships in code is that every time we define a class, we specify what class it inherits from, and we do so with what's called the extends clause. So here we have two classes, Terry and John, and John extends the class Ben. So Ben is the parent of John, John is the child of Ben. Terry has no extends clause, so by default uh, it extends the object class. We could explicitly write here extends object, but if you leave it out, it just automatically is assumed to be a child of object. Now, one thing you certainly can't do is have circular inheritance. You can't have a situation where the arrows of inheritance end up pointing back at some class. That doesn't make sense. It's not even clear what this would even mean if it were allowed. No, so you have to have a proper uh, tree-like hierarchy that ultimately points back up to object. If you try to write something like this, the compiler will object. Probably the most important thing to understand about inheritance, besides the uh, base level understanding of what it does, is that you should understand when to use inheritance and when not to. The general guideline is to try to make a distinction between an is-a relationship and a has-a relationship. When two classes have a proper inheritance relationship, an object of one class is a valid kind of object of the other class. That is, it is a proper substitute because it has everything that class has, it just has more stuff. So for example, it's proper for the class mammal to inherit from animal because a mammal is an animal. A mammal is just a more specific kind of animal, and so every mammal has everything an animal does, it just has more stuff, it has more specific stuff. Similarly, it's proper to have cat inherit from mammal because a cat is a valid kind of mammal. 
In contrast, if we have two classes, bicycle and wheel, it doesn't make sense for wheel to inherit from bicycle or the other way around. The proper relationship in that case is that a bicycle is a thing which has a wheel, or two wheels in this case. So the bicycle class should have a field that contains a wheel, or two wheels. A wheel is not a valid kind of bicycle, it's a component of a bicycle. The classic mistake made by people new to object-oriented programming is that they overuse inheritance. In particular, they end up trying to use inheritance when they should be using just composition. A bicycle is composed of a wheel, or two wheels, so it has one or two wheel fields. That's composition. Inheritance, for some reason, tends to be like the hammer that makes everything look like a nail. It's really useful when you actually need it, but you shouldn't feel any obligation to use it in your programs. In fact, in most small to medium-sized programs, it's quite possible you won't use any inheritance whatsoever. Or rather, all the classes that you create will just extend object rather than extend from each other. When inheritance is used in smaller programs, it's more likely that rather than inheriting one of your classes from another, you will define a class which inherits from a class in the standard library, because that's how they're designed to be used. Some classes are designed to be extended from, and that's what you're supposed to do with them. Even if you do end up using inheritance among your own classes, you should understand that it's generally a bad idea to have deep levels of inheritance. That is, if you were to diagram the tree of classes, you won't see many uh, chains that go down more than about three or four levels. So if you end up with classes that have like 10 or 20 ancestors, you're probably doing something wrong. Now, if you look in the standard library and some third-party Java libraries, you may find that there are examples of inheritance hierarchies that go down about six or seven levels. It's not necessarily what you want to imitate in your own code. You know, library code is its own special case. It has different design requirements than most other code. It typically has to be much more general and flexible, and this leads sometimes to some rather elaborate class hierarchies. I strongly advise you not to take your cues from such examples.